For RCR TV, I'm Sean Kinney, and welcome to HetNet Happenings, where we take a look at all things DAS, Wi-Fi, small cell, and much, much more. Comscope. Thinking beyond today's technology to help you make the best decision for your network and your business. Telecom Careers, the number one global telecom and wireless job board. Telecomcareers.com. All right, welcome back to HetNet Happenings. We're joined this week by Amir Zufanan. He's the CEO and founder of Exalt Wireless. Uh, Amir has three decades of experience working in the wireless industry with companies such as Western Multiplexer and Harris, where he helped launch numerous wireless systems used by carriers and enterprise customers around the world. Uh, Amir f founded Exult in 2004, then led the company through a management buyout last year, which resulted in Exult Wireless. So Amir, thank you so much for joining us on the show. And uh, by way of an introduction, could you just give us an overview of the work that Exult Wireless does? Us, please. Sure. Thanks, John, and thank you for having me on the show. Um, Exalt focuses on wireless backhaul and wireless access. So we're really a wireless connectivity company. We have over 2,000 customers in uh, 70 countries, installed base of about 50,000 systems, and that's evenly split between service providers and enterprises. All right, very good. So Exalt specializes in access and backhaul networks. This is what uh, brings connectivity from the core out to the edge of the network. And so Amir, let's jump right into it. As uh, demand for data continues to grow as a function of 4G LTE deployments, as well as Wi-Fi, small cell, and demand for cloud access, are existing backhaul networks capable of keeping up? Uh, the short answer is no. Um, the backhaul network that was built um, in the past was really primarily built for voice applications. And as we know, data was put on um, later on top of that network. So it's been trying to keep up for a long time. And now, as we go toward you know, higher capacity um, standards, uh, LTE, advanced LTE and 5G, uh, the, the backhaul networks need to be upgraded, and in fact, in most cases, they have to be overhauled. Okay, yeah, and I know this is a really broad question that calls for a little bit of speculation, but in terms of backhaul infrastructure, from your perspective, what needs to happen uh, as operators move towards 5G? Yeah, so, um, you know, if you look at the various backhaul technologies, uh, it might be good to review very quickly, you know, what the options are. There are basically three options traditionally. There's copper, fiber, and wireless, which has been microwave for the most part. Um, copper took about 100 years to build, and it goes everywhere, but it really can't keep up with the bandwidth demand anymore. So for all practical purposes, copper is dead. Uh, fiber is plentiful near the core, you know, in, in downtown areas, very, very close to downtown core areas. Uh, you, have, you have quite a bit of fiber in large buildings, but as soon as you move away from, from these larger buildings where fiber terminates, uh, there is really no, no fiber. Um, and uh, wireless, um, for, for the longest time, has been on this curve of, you know, uh, going up in functionality and uh, coming down in cost, and it continues to do that. It follows Moore's law, it's very similar to computing. So um, as bandwidth demand grows, this technology is going to keep up. And so operators are going to take a much more serious look at microwave and millimeter waves, and, to, and generally speaking, wireless technologies, and move that uh, technology from the back burner to the front burner. Yeah, you mentioned uh, the fiber cores, particularly around ultra-dense metro networks, which is something we'll talk a little bit about more later. But you also mentioned microwaves. So let's take a look at a uh, use case. Uh, last year, a company called Airbeam used Exalt's Explore Air microwave backhaul systems for a VOIP deployment in uh, Arizona. So in that particular case, Amir, uh, tell us a little bit about 
about why microwave was the preferred backhaul method here? Yeah, so if you look at a typical geographic area, there are these, uh, what they're called FAPs, the, the fiber access points, access points, which really become the major pops for, for service providers. They either rent or own the location or the fiber termination. And, um, uh, you know, it's just not economical to run fiber from these FAPs, few FAPs in a, in a given geographic area in a town, let's say, uh, to every customer, uh, it just doesn't pay off. You know, the payback models that these guys, uh, you know, use are sometimes measured in months and in, and in a few years, as opposed to the old, you know, the older carrier payback models of 10 or 20 years. So it just doesn't work in an ISP world. And so um, what uh, Airbeam and, and others uh, like those guys are doing is they're using microwave technology you know, gigabit microwave technology and, you know, multi hundred megabit microwave technology to, to basically extend that uh, bandwidth out to the customer at very, very low cost. The difference between the two can be huge. You know, fiber still costs, you know, upwards of $100,000 per mile. So for one gigabit connection over a five mile typical distance out to a customer, you're, you're talking about half a million dollars or more. Uh, whereas wireless can cost anywhere from ten to twenty thousand dollars for the same connection. So the difference is just really, really big, and that's why these guys are looking at looking at microwave as a very serious way to solve the problem. Yeah, you mentioned uh, cost as one of the big differentiating factors between fiber and microwave. Uh, from my perspective, at least, another big advantage of microwave is uh, the speed that it can be deployed. Right. That's the other advantage. Uh, same day deployment is is pretty typical, especially in the ISP world, and even some of the carriers. You know, we've seen, you know, in, in emergency situations, uh, you know, large tier, tier one carriers move very very quickly and put the microwave in very very rapidly and bring up cell sites or temporary cell sites or what have you. Whereas with fiber, as you know, it can take you know six nine months, sometimes twelve months, and sometimes the zoning issues just don't allow you to run fiber. Mm -hmm. And we mentioned uh, 5G earlier, and that's still uh, an emerging standard. There's been no international accord on what it's going to be, but it's looking like it's definitely going to be born out of the ultra-dense metro networks, which are all connected to those fiber rings. So at the end of the day, Amir, is, is 5G going to be dependent on fiber, or does microwave have a place in these uh, ultra-dense metro networks? Yeah, so... You know, fiber continues to go, uh, you know, in the ground. More and more fiber will be in the ground. Uh, but it's at a slower pace, um, as we just described. And it's really for the for the core and for the backbone part of the network. Um, and it's evolving. And we're talking about 100, 100 gigabit, gigabit per second now. And it will evolve to even higher speeds. Um, but as you have this densification going on with, uh, with 4G and 5G and small cells, um, you have a lot of nodes that uh, need to be connected at hundreds of megabits and maybe up to a gigabit or so. Uh, and it just doesn't make sense to run fiber to each one of these locations. Uh, the payoff again is not, not there and practically it's not really possible to dig up the street everywhere and, and run fiber to everywhere every node. So microwave um, is really a, um, a complement to fiber. It's not a replacement for fiber. Uh, the more fiber goes in, the more microwave will go in. Um, and uh, that's just the nature of the, the, of the beast. And the two work very well together. So we're going to be living in a hybrid fiber microwave world as we go forward. And there'll be a lot more microwave just because the number of nodes are going way up as we go to small cells. Yeah, I think that's a really uh, salient point, Amir. The more fiber that is deployed, these right-of-way and jurisdictional challenges are going to make it harder for more fiber to go in there. So that's, from your perspective, where microwave comes in as that complementary backhaul method? That's right. And, you know, the jurisdictional um, issues uh, can be overcome with microwave uh, because the size of the of the devices is also getting smaller. The power consumption is going down. The distances are shorter, of course, and 
you know, laws of physics help us help us there. So you can hide these uh, nodes and, and nodal equipment a lot better and blend them into the environment so that visual pollution, which is one of the major objections, is, is lower than minimized. Sure. Well, Amir, uh, you know, I've been to uh, PCIA and a few other infrastructure shows lately, and backhaul really has been a hot topic. Uh, from your perspective, from Exalt Wireless perspective, what are the big backhaul topics going to be in 2015? Yeah, um, so, you know, spectrum is limited, uh, it, forever it will be limited. And so one of the hot topics is, you know, how to get more capacity in a particular uh, piece of spectrum. So efficiency of transmission and a variety of methods that are, that are um, utilized in order to achieve that is going to be a hot topic going forward, um, you know, at least for another decade is, is my prediction, um, you know, multi-channel aggregation so that you can you can also stack some of these channels some of the same technologies we see in the access world are going to be applicable uh, on the backhaul side as well uh, such as mimo and other technologies that you know, there's a lot of buzzwords out there on the on the access side of the network uh, all those technologies are applicable to to the backhaul side as well the reason they haven't been utilized in the past is that the cost has been prohibitive due to moore's law um, and the cost of processing coming down at these higher speeds, now you can um, actually achieve, uh, you know, very, very high capacity radios, uh, employing a variety of techniques and still be able to process all of that, the digital signal processing, processing is what I'm referring to, process all that in a very, very um, uh, low cost manner, which has been the biggest barrier. So that's one. The other one is, um, you know, uh, nature of spectrum is you know logarithmic so you if you want more more bandwidth you need to move up and so we are being pushed into higher frequencies so i think we're going to see more uh role roles played by you know uh millimeter wave radio 60 gigahertz 70 gigahertz 80 gigahertz and you name it it goes even higher than that um area license bands which have been dormant have been sitting there for a long time uh, you know they were created for the CLEC business about 15 years ago and um the spectrum has been picked up pennies on the dollar it's available and technology has caught up and the need has caught up so now um you know if you put all of that together there's a business case to be made to make equipment in those in those bands and, and create multi-point technologies mesh technologies and so on and the other one is just um uh, is this sheer integration, um, you know, uh, access part of the network, uh, by definition, is going to be wireless anyway, and with wireless backhaul, uh, there is tremendous synergy uh, there uh, to, you know, combine technologies and integrate access and backhaul and shrink the size and make them suitable for this um, uh, highly dense network that we're going to uh, you know, we're going to need in order to bring that capacity to users. All right. So you outlined the hot topics in backhaul for us. Now tell us a little bit about how Exalt is positioned to uh, evolve as this technology changes. Uh, what's your vision for the company? Yeah. So, you know, we've been on this path of creating a one-stop shop for backhaul for a long time. Uh, we have a very broad portfolio of products with license exempt, license bands, area license bands, We've been primarily focused on point to point because that's what, what was sellable over the last decade. But as we go forward, um, as I mentioned, point to multi point technologies um, are going to uh, play a more prominent role in backhaul. Um, and also, um, you know, we're going to see access being integrated uh, with backhaul. And so we are we're very much interested in finding ways in which we can do that and, and bring you know, innovative products into market that bring the overall cost down and, and take the functionality to where it needs to be for 5G. Um, you know, these, are, these are basically you know, the main themes. The other thing for Exalt is that we've been uh, very much US focused, uh, but there are you know, many parts of the world that still don't have access uh, in, developing, in the developing world, two thirds of the world is still unconnected. So we're also very interested and have an eye on 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 the two thirds of the world, billions of people um, that need to be connected. And many of the technologies we're talking about here are applicable 
uh, to, to those areas of the world as well. So we're venturing out and going to different, different locations, you know, in Africa and, and um, um, Asia and other places where connectivity is um, far and few in between. And, you know, wireless is the way to really do that. Well, very good, Amir. I sure appreciate you coming on HetNet Happenings and uh, talking backhaul with me. And it's uh, great to learn about the work Exalt Wireless is doing. Uh, for the folks at home that want to learn a little bit more about Exalt, uh, what's the website? It's www.exaltcom.com. All right. Very good. Exaltcom.com. And Amir, thank you again for joining us and to the folks at home. Thanks for tuning in to HetNet Happenings. For a lot more from RCR Wireless News, I'd encourage you to check out rcrwireless.com. You can subscribe to our daily e-news blast. For multimedia content, you should visit the RCR TV website or the RCR Wireless YouTube channel. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next week. HetNet Happenings is a production of RCR TV. To reach Sean Kinney or to suggest... Amir, thank you so much. I enjoyed that.